Clap, clap, clap your hands, clap your hands together. Clap, clap, clap your hands, clap your hands together. in my fifth grade class. These boys and girls are learning basic skills, acquiring knowledge about the world in which they live, developing healthy bodies, learning to play together, learning to work together, growing into effective democratic citizenship. That's our job in school. Here's how we work at our job. I'm the fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Ruth Carlton. I'm helping plan our daily work schedule. That's how we usually start each day. We like to plan our work together. Planning together gives all of us a stake in what we do. It makes our Today, we decided to begin our program with a discussion on pioneer life that we started yesterday. Now, is everyone seated where he can see everyone else? Fine. Now, does anyone remember what started us thinking about pioneer life yesterday? Alice? Robbie told us about visiting a log cabin last summer near his grandfather's place near Cincinnati. John told us about a movie he saw about the early pioneers. Betty reminded us there is a very good section on pioneer life in our social studies textbook. So, anyway, we talked quite a bit about it and agreed that we ought to find out more about pioneer life in our country. That was a good review of yesterday's discussion. Now today, perhaps we'd better decide what we need to learn about the pioneers. Who has a suggestion to make? I think it would be nice to go downtown and see a, lo a lot of movies, like the ones John saw. <laughs> <laughs> I agree that might be a lot of fun. Later on, perhaps we could see some films in class. But right now, wasn't there something we needed to do first? Yes. First, let's decide what we should learn about the pioneers. Let's study their housing and their clothing. And food is another thing. Those are all good suggestions. Let's think about them for a minute. First, housing. Now, why would we be interested in that? Well, everyone in this part of the world needs some kind of shelter, because it gets cold and many days are rainy. Yes. People like a home where a family can be together. That's right. Those are some of the reasons that make housing important in most parts of the world. But why should we be especially interested in the housing method of the pioneers? Well, they couldn't bring much with them, so they had to use what they found. I suppose it was true of food and clothing, too. They had to learn to do things the best way they could with what they had or what they could get. Yes, that's right, Nancy. Now, what does all this have to do with why we're going to study about the housing, clothing, and food of the pioneers? I know. The pioneers probably started new ways of doing many things, and those new ways had an effect on our country's development. And I'll bet some of those ideas are better than the old ones. Just like today, when you're out camping in the woods, you can figure out better ways of doing things than when you're home. Those are good points, Dick and Tom. Well, we have three topics of pioneer life to study. First, shelter, the kinds of they lived in and how they were built. Second, food, the ways they got it, preserved it, prepared it, and ate it. Third, clothing, the way it was designed and styled, how they made it, and how good it was. 
Perhaps we'd better make a record of these before we go any further. Now, can anyone think of another topic? Well, I think we should study something about their government and how they enforce their laws. I read once that if they ever caught anyone who stole a horse, they hung him on a tree right away. How did they know he was guilty? Well, those are some of the things we can learn more about. Now, any other ideas? Yes, I have a suggestion. How about what the pioneers did for fun, like songs and dances and parties? That's an excellent suggestion, Susan. Now, I'd like to ask a question. Why do you suppose the pioneers went out west? What made them leave their homes in the east and go out into the wilderness where life was so much harder? Jack, do you think you'd do that? Not me. I gave up the idea of running away some time ago when my dad started giving me an allowance. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if there'd been more allowances in those days, there would have been fewer pioneers. Now let's see if we can't find out the real reason behind the pioneer movement to the West. Let's add it to the list. All right. It seems to me this is a good list. Now what is our next job? Are we ready to start planning? That's how we got started studying pioneer life. Our activities grew out of the children's own concerns, out of our own free exchange of ideas and plans. Naturally, I provided guidance and encouragement wherever necessary. To help get the children started in their activities, I worked with a school librarian to make a selection of suitable books on pioneer life. These books formed a working library in the classroom. The children made use of the reading materials according to their individual interests and abilities. Here were opportunities to use the skills we were learning in regular reading periods. It's about the first winter the settlers spent in the new territory and how cold it was. That'll give us a good idea about what they had to wear. Yes. Well, mine is about how they made their wool. Gosh, it must have been hard in those days. Each child is unique and different. Each child needs to find material that he can read with a reasonable amount of success. And he learns how to use the tools which will help him. We learn new words when they're needed. In this way, we build a functional vocabulary. What word are you looking for, Walter? Timber. I think it's something like wood, but I'm not sure. Don't you think it would be a good idea if we all share these new words we're learning in our pioneer study? Sure. A series of meaningful activities involves a number of basic skills. During our study of pioneer life, we were greatly motivated to improve our skills in reading, writing, and in the use of numbers. For example, here's one of our regular reading periods. The pupils are divided into groups, each working on improvement of basic reading skills. Children in one group are reviewing the meanings of a list of new words compiled from their individual reading. Children in another group are indicating answers to questions based on a story they've just read. Children in a third group are reading aloud to one another. In this particular group, there are some children who need special help in the improvement of their reading skills. One of our activities was the preparation of a mural depicting various phases of pioneer life. Everybody contributed to the mural in some way. Even those with little aptitude for art enjoyed adding their own touches to make the mural more effective. The information that various pupils gathered was shared freely with the rest of the class. One way of sharing was by oral reports. Another was by written reports. Some of the pupils followed special interests. Alice wanted to learn more about the clothes of the pioneers. 
She found the school library a good resource and a skilled librarian to be very helpful. Pupils with similar interests work together. Well, the only one I know about is Daniel Boone. I read a whole book about him. It tells all about how he first went into Kentucky and how he lived in the woods. He even could live on berries, nuts, and roots. Why don't we find out all about the trailblazers that made the routes that the settlers took to Ohio? That's right. And then we can show them on the map. Jack, you like to work with maps. Why don't you mark the wilderness trail that went to Ohio on this map? Okay. I read that Daniel Boone built his own log cabin in the mountains. I'd like to make a model of his cabin. Why don't you and Ramsey get together? He's always fooling around with models. Philip and Randy and two other boys told me they wanted to build a model of a pioneer house. I thought the idea was good and offered to help in any way I could. Besides, this might be a way of relating our pioneer unit to our work in arithmetic. Later that day, during the arithmetic period, the class was reviewing fractions. The children were taking turns manipulating fractional parts on a felt board. That was very good, Susan. Now I think we should see how the study of fractions can help us in our study of pioneer life. This morning, some of the boys decided to build a model of a pioneer house, and they came to me to ask about the proportions. What is the first thing that we need to know about anything we're going to make a model of? How big it is. That's right. To make a model of Daniel Boone's cabin, for example, we need to know its length, its width, and its height. Now, does anyone know what we call the length, width, and height of any object? Dimensions? Right. So first we need to know the dimensions of the original cabin. Have any of you boys obtained that information yet? Yes. The cabin was 20 feet long, 16 feet wide, and 10 feet high. Now, suppose we want to make our model 20 inches long. We need to find out the relationship between the 20-foot length of the original cabin and the 20-inch length of our model cabin. Then we can apply that same relationship to find out what the other dimensions of our model should be. Now, let's work that out. The original cabin was 20 feet long. Who can tell me how many inches that is? 240 inches. Right. Now, the relationship between the 20-inch length of our model and the 240-inch length of the original cabin is 1 inch to 12 inches. This relationship can... Just to make sure everyone understood this explanation, we went over it again and applied this relationship to all the dimensions of the model. The building of the cabin became a class project even though actual construction was to be handled by a small group. Other members of the class began to pursue a variety of special interests related to their study of pioneer life. We had some houses like this in Texas. Isn't it a beauty? Of course, we didn't need the heating down there, but that air conditioning sure was a help. You know, my father's a builder, and he was telling me last night about how different modern houses are from old-fashioned ones. Really? Oh, Mrs. Carton. Yes, John? What is it? I think it would be nice for all of us to learn about those differences. Do you think Walter's father could come here and tell us how modern houses differ from pioneer houses? Well, I think that would be a wonderful idea. Walter, do you think your father would agree to do that? Well, I suppose so. Anyhow, I'd be glad to ask him, and he can get in touch with you on the time. The Bye. class was enthusiastic about the proposed visit of Walter's father. We decided that we could learn a great deal if we prepared a list of good questions to ask him when he came. That's 
pretty. Look, I brought this book of folk songs from home. It says some of them were sung by the early settlers. It says they used to have dances to go with some of these songs. Maybe Miss Phillips would know some of them. Miss Phillips, their gym teacher, was glad to help them. Now, Larry, the next time, bring your lady over here more. Ready? Again? One, two, three, four, go. settlers didn't have much time to play, so they used to combine work with play. How could they do that? Why not? That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes a group of neighbors used to get together for a bee to do some work together, like husking corn or raising a house. After that, they'd have a party. They'd eat and sing and dance. And these are some of the dances and songs that they used to do. What fun if our kids could do that. Randy and Philip and that group could build the house. Yes, and Jean and Kathy and those could make the clothes. Say, let's ask Mrs. Carlton. The group suggested that the class put on a play of Pioneer Life. I felt this might be a good way of helping the children summarize important ideas about Pioneer Life and to engage in creative activities. I presented their suggestions to the class. They thought it was a good idea. Well, what should we do in the play? How can we show what we've learned about pioneer life? Let's show Daniel Boone escaping from the Indians. Well, we thought a house raising might be nice because it shows how the pioneers had to work together. That's right. And we could sew clothes. And after the house is up, we could sing and dance. And there is always a feast afterwards. Maybe we could have some refreshments. Yeah. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Let's use the map with the wilderness trail, too. The class worked hard preparing for the play. They finished the mural. The sewing group made costumes. The boys tried fitting together sections of the pioneer house they had built. The song and dance group rehearsed with Miss Phillips' help. The children wanted to invite their parents to the play, so we reviewed the section on letter writing in our textbooks. Then each pupil wrote a letter of invitation. Finally, the big day arrived. Our play started with a house raising. Daddy? Okay, now for the roof. Okay, fellas, we've done it. Come on, everybody, the refreshments are ready. Boy, they look good. Mm, am I hungry? Can I have another one? Mmm, boy, they're delicious. Oh, aren't they? I watched the pupils and their parents, too, participating in the fun, I thought of some of the values of our unit on pioneer life. These experiences, to a very great extent, grew out of the children's own suggestions and plans. We gained skill in working together. We learned a lot about the early settlers. We improved our skills in such areas as reading, writing, and arithmetic. We deepened our appreciation of our historical past. Through all of these rich and creative activities, we have gained skill for effective living today.